Hi, I'm Marcus Patton, and I figured I'd do a line of stuff that can be sold as prints. So, I decided to take a bunch of Monster Girl pumps and stick them in a neon cyberpunk set because I'm so original. Also, it gave me some material for speed painting that I can stick up on this YouTube channel so that no one can continue to watch it. Uh, plan, Marcus. Plan. So, what to talk about? Well, I guess I'm using these pieces as a learning tool. This piece specifically uh, about backgrounds and compositions. So, guess I can share my thoughts on composition. Yeah. So, back to the beginning. So, when I started making art again, serious like, I began a journey of self-education. I learned all these terms, these phrases, the reasons to know why my art is terrible. We'll discuss anatomy another day, my greatest foe. Oh, uh, one of the big topics is composition, which as far as I can tell, has been honed and crafted by the masters. It has some pretty hard and fast rules that were laid down by the titans of the medium that we call visual arts. And must be obeyed so that the most common of fuckwits can know what's being expressed at any given time. To not follow these rules is to squiggle like a child on a piece of paper. It's probably why there are a thousand different techniques, all of which, as far as I can tell, can be completely ignored. Such an imposing subject, and for one that requires an awful lot of math. Complicated math, too. It seems like it can be summed up as... Lead the eye to the bit of the page you want it to go to, which is as simple as an arrow pointing at a dot. And that's it, folks. Thanks for listening. Hope you like watching the rest of this uh, speed paint and absolute science. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. I've been Marcus Patton. Nah, okay, sorry. Yeah, joking. Uh, like most things with, with these hard and fast rules in artwork, it's like a good construction premise graph, graph, I guess. A good foundation is a good foundation. One of the most commonly used compositions that you can ignore is the rule of thirds. It's the one I tend to use. This is where you divide the canvas into three, along a vertical and a horizontal axis. Uh, the, the intersections of this little grid are called points of interest. Points of interest. The first time I heard about this technique, uh, the first research I'd done in this technique, I'd come across this YouTuber moaning about this technique. He had taken a dull photo on a dull day in dull lighting of a dull subject. He blamed the rule of thirds for this lapse of judgment. It was a good example of how adhering to a rule, like it's your gospel, like your particular Christ demanded it, can result in dull, dull, dull pictures. But, photography, but photographing something boring, even if you're using a golden ratio, would still be boring. He went on to list a whole bunch of other techniques, all of which are impossible to Google or hide behind expensive PDFs. Again, for a pretty important subject, it's a vague one. I'm lucky enough to know some cats who work, in, who work for a pretty big advertising company, and when I ask them, the highly paid artist who needs to be able to manipulate the viewer's eyes on a pin drop so no one forgets to buy chocolate anymore. When I asked him about like composition and leading the eye and that stuff, he said, well, I, I, I don't know. It's, you know, the rules are there and you can ignore them. A point of interest, like a golden ratio, is essentially where you stick your vocal point, the point where you, the point you want your eye to go to. The eye in the west, by the way, travels from the top left to the bottom right. In the east, the eye travels from the top right to the bottom left. The wave is a good example. We, in the west, like London, uh, typically see the wave as a, as a subject, not Mount Fuji or the boats. And in Japan, they see Mount Fuji and the boats. The vocal point of the picture, as intended, is Mount Fuji. It's part of a series of prints depicting Mount Fuji. But that's not what we see. It's an interesting little tidbit. So, the vocal point of this piece is the harpy. Using the rule of thirds, I place them near the points of interest, but not on them, as this tape creates a bit of tension in the picture. I've also um, put more detail in the harpy to add more contrast, to, to contrast her against the quite stark barren building behind her, you know, 
which is all straight lines, and the harpy is more curved lines, a lot more curved lines. There's more for you to look at, and so the eye naturally uh, is gravitated towards the harpy. The fact that she's got a face helps matters too. I was also using the building behind as 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 leading lines. In theory, your eye is directed down the building, which is stark and dark colours, to the harpy, which is. Oh wait, wait a minute. Shoot, uh, the building itself was going to be illuminated in neon, so the dark hair kind of worked. But like, I just I couldn't get. Yeah, I changed my mind. So yeah, now cool, right? She has red hair, which pops out more. That's design work. Well done, Marcus. Well done, me indeed. I've also had the uh, the diagonal uh, lines converging towards her as well. So like you got like a, so you got like a big block of dark color, two light colors, and they all kind of converge to sh uh, to to the harpy basically also this is a side note nothing really to do with composition but like i work like a proper job so i do a lot of this work in the evening and i'm fucking exhausted which can lead to simple but confounding mistakes that make you hate life so very much namely if you apply a, a blur filter to a selected um selection or you left the locked transparency layer on the blur won't work just something to keep in mind. If it's not working, maybe you got the little marching ants around or your layers locked down. Just, just a simple click of the buttons and it works a treat. I would make that mistake again and again and again because, you know, why not? Now, as I said, you can ignore all this noise except for the marching ant ones. That, that's that's some piece you to take to your grave. You, so, you can ignore this noise. Just create pen to paper, stylus to scream. But it's good to have a working knowledge of these techniques simply because... Inspiration. She's a fickle mistress. And operating within these rules, within these guidelines, means that you're not having to create everything from a jumping start. You're not looking at a blank piece of paper. You're looking at something with a mark on it. And that's half the work done, is the first step. Well, cool. I hope that was of some interest. Maybe you learned something. Or maybe I'm speaking absolute hogwash. If you think... I'm wrong. Please let me know how to do proper composition in the in the comments below. If anyone actually watches this video, which judging by the count, pro probably not. No. Mm -hmm. If you like this piece, this neon harpy, she's av um, available at my Redbubble account. Uh, if you want a high def copy of this, plus the line art and the work in progress, like the the roughs, the, th the thumbs and the blues, they can be found over at my Patreon account, where you just. Yeah. And also, if you like what you see on this website, on this YouTube channel, and on my Instagram account, and you want to support me, you can go over to Patreon as well and uh, chip in a few a few pounds. That would that'd be lovely. Wonderful, I dare say. Yeah. She's the first in like a series of prints that I'll be doing, the second of which will be coming your way soon, and will be uh, a neon cyber jack-o'-lantern. Yeah, that sounds fun. If you liked, like and subscribe, maybe ring that bell. You can buy my artwork here, and you can support and like me here. Unless, of course, you don't want to. It's up to you. I've been Marcus Patton, and this is Neon Harpy. Hasta mañana.